Well, I guess it's time to rip the guts out of her. Stand by. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Rattle Can Fab Shop. I'm James, and today we are gonna swap over my Lincoln Electric SP135 Plus MIG welder from solid core wire and uh, a 7525 Argon CO2 shielding gas to flux core wire. And it's a little bit of an involved process. We're going to swap the polarity out. We're going to swap a dry roller out. And then we are going to change the liner in our uh, MIG lead. And uh, put on a different kind of wire. So ho hopefully it's not too difficult. Uh, let's get to it. All right, we're going to voice over the rest of this. I have a Lincoln Electric SP-135 Plus, and in my instruction manual, it tells me that if I want to make a conversion over to the flux core, I can actually buy this as a kit. Uh, it's part number K549-1. So inside this kit, you're going to get a package that's going to have a 035 contact tip. It's also going to have a gasless nozzle. We're going to get a new liner, which you are going to have to cut to length, not as scary as it sounds, and you'll get a 10 pound box of new flux core wire. Now for some reason they say that the knurled drive roller is an option, and I don't, I don't understand that. It's, uh, they're not giving this part away. I mean this little wheel will run you like 32 or 35 bucks something like that and it is uh, unlike the the drive wheel that comes in the welder this one is the same on both sides it's an 035 groove but it's a knurled groove so that it can um, so that it can pull that wire along because uh, the stock drive wheel is smooth and it could have some problems gripping the wire. If that's the case, you're probably going to crank down on it. And if you do that, you're going to bend this wire and you're going to have feed problems and all kinds of shenanigans could ensue. Now we've got to take the old wire off. And remember, when you disconnect this wire, don't let it go because then that whole roll is going to spring open and it's just... It's not a good day for anybody because uh, it's going to be almost impossible to get that wire tightened up on there enough to uh, to roll that. Now to take the old drive roller off, it's just a Phillips head. You, know, you pull that screw out, and that drive we that drive wheel has got a slot on it, so you can take the old one off, put the new one on. And here you can see the difference between the the stock drive roller on the left, which will drive. 024 and 030 solid core wire and the knurled drive roller on the right um, which is an 035. This is probably uh, a pretty good time for you to do the scheduled maintenance on your welder which you should be doing anyways. You can also blow up inside the uh, the vents on the front and the back of your machine uh, to try to get that cleaned up. You're going to have to swap the polarity on this welder. Uh, that's easy to do. They're just wing nuts and uh, be sure to consult your manual and you just swap the leads from positive to negative. Now in order to disconnect your gun lead, you're going to have to disconnect these two wires. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to use a paint pen and I'm going to mark on one of these connectors. Now I'm going to put a paint dot on my machine. That way I make sure I get it connected back up the way it goes. Now the manual isn't very helpful when it comes to this. All it says is disconnect the gun lead. Well what you're looking for is this little wing nut uh, on the drive assembly 
and if you back that off, then you will be able to just grasp uh, the gun lead and you'll be able to pull that out. It'll be snug because you've got a couple of O-rings on there and then you're also going to have to fish out your gun trigger wires. Now you're going to have to remove the old liner and if you look in the nozzle, the gas diffuser end of your gun, that little coil in the middle, that is your liner. It's, it's just like a big coiled spring and so we're going to have to gently pull that out of there and on the end of the gun that you've pulled out of the machine this is a, a good time for you to take a look at the two o-rings and be sure to inspect them if they've got any cracks uh, or if they look dry rotted uh, you know it's probably a pretty good time to get a hold of a couple of those and replace them and then there is a my manual says it is a slotted retention screw but mine is actually uh, a little allen screw um, that holds that liner in there you'll back that off and then you can pull that little brass kind of a button on the end that's actually the end of your liner and you be nice and gentle when you pull this out of there and be sure to label your old liner and store it away you may want to swap this over at a future date this way i can pick this liner up out of a you know i've got a whole pile of cables and stuff that this is going to sit in with and if i look at this this tells me it's an sp135 plus mig liner take this opportunity again this is a good time to get everything nice and clean blow some uh, some nice dry compressed air through there get any kind of uh, any kind of dust or schmutz out of there now when you go to thread this in keep this in mind you can take the gas diffuser off of the end of your gun if you will do that when you are sliding this liner through it's not going to catch on the threads on the inside of your gas diffuser ask me how I figured that out you also want to be very careful that you do not kink your liner because if you do it's going to open up a little part you're going to have a little gap in your liner and while your wires running through it it might not cause any problem if you have like a bird's nest and then you have to refeed this through again it might be a pickle then so just be careful work nice and slow now what what I've done is I have once my liner is pushed all the way through and I have seated the end of it uh, onto my machine end of that uh, cable I have marked that and so that's where I'm going to make that cut the manual tells you a, gives you a measurement and it tells you to do it with the gas diffuser off this is the way that I did it I simply used a cutoff wheel uh, to get my to get the end of this cut to length. Make sure that you go in there with a file, or uh, I, in this case, I used a diamond file, and was able to make sure that I didn't have any burrs because I didn't want to have anything get caught on the end of that and uh, cause some kind of drag. And when the gas diffuser goes back on. And they should be pretty much to flush right there. Now, if your machine was running the small two-pound wheels of wire, then uh, you will have to fish around and find the adapter that came with your machine that allows you to run the 10-pound rolls. Tension is kind of, is again, kind of touchy on this. You want it to have to work to pull wire off the wheel but you don't want it to work really hard to pull wire off the wheel there's there's no measurement that that anybody can give you you just have to kind of mess around with it I turn the speed all the way down then I run my wire through there because if it catches I don't, I don't want it to create havoc your drive roller is going to be pretty grippy so you should might be able to back off 
on what your setting normally was for solid core wire. This is just something that you're going to have to kind of gauge uh, by does it feed. Now when you're feeding this wire through, you should be able to stop it on the end. You should be able to stop it with your thumb and it, and it stop pushing out. So now you put your contact tip back on, you put your gasless nozzle back on, you close your machine up, make sure that you don't have your shielding gas turned on at this time. And then you make some you make some test welds. So you can see from this there's like four or five beads that I have run on here. And what I'm trying to do is I have to make sure that my settings are correct. Uh, as far as my voltage and my wire feed speed. I also have to make sure that my travel speed is correct. I also have to make sure that my contact tip to work distance is correct. I also have to make sure that I'm dragging because if I make slag you drag and I also have to make sure that my travel speed is good. So you can see you know, all kinds of bug holes and kind of a junky looking weld in that first uh, weld. And then as the series goes down, I kind of start getting it figured out. All right, have we mastered flux core? No, not at all. Have we started to get this thing dialed in? Yeah, we're getting there. We got the machine set up, we got the machine running. Uh, we're within the parameters that the chart says we are supposed to be able to run. Um, you know, we're, we started out really ugly and now we're a little bit ugly there and now we're getting less ugly down here. And so we just keep testing and we keep, you know, modifying our, our methods. You know, I'm working on the drag angle, working on the work angle, working on the, um, the tip to workpiece distance, working on travel speed, uh, working on all of those. Um, but now we've got a machine that will run um, uh, a little more efficiently as far as money-wise, is much more portable, and will get us um, some, uh, some more penetration, which we're going to need to weld up this square tubing here. So anyways, uh, that's how I did it. Uh, there's a lot smarter people out there, but this is the way we're doing it today. Thanks for hanging out with us. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it. Have a good one. Cheers. I hope you found this episode educational or entertaining, or maybe even both. You might want to check this one out as well. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell to be notified when new videos drop. And if you've got comments, make sure you put them down beneath the sermon notes. Thanks for hanging out with us here at the Rattle Can Fab Shop. Y'all have a good one. Cheers.